The data presented this week uh, build on what we've previously shown for the outcomes of patients, the first 100 patients treated with the tendine system who have severe mitral regurgitation in the expanded clinical study. That uh, previous experience showed very good control of mitral regurgitation and functional improvements in outcomes. And what these data show is that at two years, we still have excellent control of the mitral regurgitation with more than 90% of the patient having no MR at all and only a small number having any MR measurable. So there was no patient with a greater than or equal to one plus MR. And with that, we also saw sustained improvements in clinical outcomes as measured by the KCCQ score, New York Heart Association score, and six minute walk times. I think we've previously shown that the outcomes for the procedure are very predictable with excellent safety in the first 30 days. At one year, we've shown that there was sustained benefit in terms of MR reduction and functional status. And what these data show is that those changes persist out to two years with a very, very good control of mitral regurgitation and an improvement in uh, functional studies such as New York Heart Association. We had 80% of the patients who were in NYHA class one and class two and improvements in KCCQ score. We also had a quite substantial reduction in the need for heart failure hospitalization in the year between one year and two year follow up compared with the six months prior to intervention. In countries where the tendine system is now commercially available, heart teams will have another option for the management of severe mitral regurgitation in patients uh, where previously that the only alternatives were surgery or a transcatheter mitral valve approach. I think this uh, study has outlined another very reliable, very predictable device that can be used for complete elimination of mitral regurgitation. The registry really only included patients who were poor candidates for mitral clip implantation. So to that end, I think we can really only speak to that population and say that uh, when patients are poor candidates for surgery, and it's unlikely they'll get a good result from uh, transcatheter mitral repair, this tendine mitral valve replacement will be an excellent alternative option for, for patients. Well, we're looking forward, first of all, in the latter part of this calendar year to the data from the larger po population of patients who are included in the CE Mark trial. And that will give us now 185 patient cohort from which we can look at uh, an expanded experience uh, and start to look in more detail at outcomes from specific patient groups, who does well, who may not do as well. In addition to that, we will also start to see uh, some outcomes from the SUMMIT trial, which is shown in the slide. Um, the SUMMIT trial is a randomized comparison for patients who are deemed suitable for either transcatheter and mitral valve implantation or for mitral clip. They'll be randomized, nearly 400 patients will be included in that. And in addition to that, there will be a 300 patient registry of patients who are considered poor candidates for mitral clip and they will go into a tendine registry. And the final arm of that, uh, of that trial will be a, a 100 patient cohort of patients with mitral annular calcification. So this trial is ongoing. We'll start to see the numbers increase gradually over the course of this year and really look forward to data from this trial to help define which patients should be treated with which device. Well, since uh, CE Mark approval, a number of centers has started commercial use of the tendine device. These include both those who were part of the expanded study but also some new sites. And we've seen uh, it, uh, several sites in Germany, sites in Norway, and soon sites in Switzerland who will start commercial use of this device. And we expect that their outcomes will be similarly extremely good, uh, very predictable control of mitral regurgitation. 